Well, more fun out in the snow. Yeah, I just got back from Hawaii. And it was a lot of fun there. I went to Maui and Hawaii, the two islands. I was there with some uh, friends and family. It's a little warmer than it was here. I do highly recommend going to Hawaii. Do not worry about saving it for your honeymoon. Just go enjoy it. There's amazing waterfalls, hikes, uh, mountains, wildlife, beaches, food. It is very expensive to eat and drink there, though I will say that. Uh, easily, easily a hundred bucks for two people with maybe one drink. Uh, yeah, food's expensive. Sorry if it's windy. Chet was over here and got most of the snow out of the way. We got the bobcat here so he can finish cleaning up by the door. Oh my. Yeah, I love winter. Mm. Huh. I know one of these light switches works. Hold on. Ah, lights up half the shed. Okay, let's get some doors open. And then we'll get to that head. We need this head. So we gotta move this bean head. I think next year we'll keep this door free of snow. Because this is a pain in the butt if we're gonna have to come over here to snow. Well, we got both doors finally open so that we can get this header out. And uh, it was a struggle, for sure. We finally got to our head. We gotta move the draper to get to the corn head, which is right there. So here comes Eric. camera ran out of battery when we were pulling the heads out, but we did take two corn heads out. Uh, we we're hoping to sell the 612 and the 712 we gotta do some maintenance on. So, we also ran back to the farm and got some old brake drums from uh, semi work. Uh, they are just scrap, but as you can tell, it's windy and we don't want those doors to blow in. So we anchored one on the outside and there's one on the inside to try to hold the doors still. Now I'm holding up the crew. You're back? Hello. He's back. Hello. I didn't think he was ever coming back. Not to my choice. <laughs> He's been in Hawaii for what, two weeks just about? Yeah, it was 10 days or so. That's fun time there. Never did see Duggle. <laughs> I think he left before I got there. You guys met in the air probably. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good to be back. I see Brody's out there playing with the snow pusher. But we got a uh, eventful day coming. We got a truck that is limping its way home with primary air, no PSI. He made it to town just fine. Then he calls me when he's leaving town. He's like, I got no air. I said, well, does it drive? He said, yeah. So he's bringing her home. We're going to get it in over the pit, see what's going on with that. We're going to put him in the other truck to run today. And then we need to wash the Kodiak. And I think we got mechanics coming out to work on some equipment. Oh, yeah. It should be a fun day. There's a lot going on. I'm high strung. Can you for tell? My, for my first day back, I think we should just tone it down it's a little bit. just too much stress. Yeah. Let's work on that. I already serviced those. That ain't serviceable. It's... 
<laughs> it's broke. <laughs> There's one broken truck for a Monday morning. You didn't make it long. So from the road trip, the roads weren't even wet that I knew of, but it's got this salt dust all over it. So another wash job for Brody. So we need to turn this tractor around because Titan is coming out to do a valve cover gasket and then also adjust the valves. The valves have, to my knowledge, never been adjusted and it's like 50 some hundred hours on it. Yeah, 5,065 hours. So we should probably do that. And the gasket's leaking down on the turbo oil and it smells really bad, so. It needs to be turned around. Brody, it's green. It's springtime for this grass. I bet it's I got green. into the lawn a bit. It's not froze under the snow. I cannot believe it. I got into the lawn and now it's growing. Isn't that a miracle? It's a miracle. It's a miracle. How's so work? I don't know. We're gonna have to try and move this over or move it ahead so you can get your big payloader in. We had this problem with the air dryer last fall where it wouldn't pump up. And then it magically started working and now we think we're having the same issue. But luckily we ordered one of these last fall and had it sitting on the shelf speculating we had issues. So relatively easy area to work. But the guy did tell me when I picked it up, mark the lines or you're really gonna hate your life because obviously there's a lot of little lines here couple here there's one well that's pretty self-explanatory but we're gonna make sure that we paint marker everything so it's super simple drain all the air before taking any lines off so we don't get something shot in our eyeball Easy enough. All right, I got them out on the table. I have to take all the air fittings out of this one. And being they're marked, I'm going to mark them before I take them out on the new one. So this is actually turning out to be a way easier job than I anticipated it to be. Got all my air fittings swapped over. Now I just have to maybe do a little cleaning here. It looks like some corrosion. Bolt her on, put the hoses on, and hopefully we fixed it. Okay. Oh, the hoses are in the way. And just like that, done. That was simple. That was way easier than, well, on the 379s, I think it's up in this area somewhere and it's really tight and just to change the filter can be a process sometimes. This, I like this, other than it does get pasted with rocks pretty good off the tires. Maybe should add another mud flap. Seems to have gone missing. So I'm gonna fire it up now and verify that it's gonna pump air. She just pumped up all by herself. Looks like we're at about 125 on both secondary air pressure and primary brake air. So I think we fixed something. Hood has to come off and this big subframe antifreeze needs to be drained some out, I think. And you guys have seen us do this before when doing vibration dampeners, so on. Uh, so we're gonna pull the, ha pull the hood, pull that subframe, hopefully before he gets here because why pay a guy, uh, what do they charge? I don't know, 150 bucks an hour to take the hood off when that's pretty easy. We'll spend an hour and save couple hundred bucks hopefully. So I'm working on the hood and dad comes down just complaining. What, what would I call it? it was, Irritated aggression? I was talking. I was explaining to myself how <laughs> worthless do we throw the company under the bus? Sure. I don't care. Improper container. Great value. 
Great value. This is what you get. See the Brand seal is still on the lid. Here, let me, it let me explain it, it to you people. How disappointed I am about this product. It's distilled water from my batteries. And this guy needs needs some new water on his batteries so he don't explode when we charge it. But this ain't the first time. This is not the first time. This here, too, have never been opened, but they're, they're, there's no water in them. It's all dripped out. Just like this one here that I could hear this funny noise when I moved. I could hear this drip, drip, drip. So look at this. Let's see if we can, oh, the bottom, huh? Well, there's nothing the matter there. Could, who is this guy? Great value. Great value. Could you do a better job with your packaging, please? Here. That's how to do it. What a great marketing gimmick. Sell it, leak it out, sell some more. Can you help me? <laughs> oh, well. Can they help me? It does weigh 1,500 pounds, so watch your toesies. And my fingers here. <clears throat> oh, oh no, she's in there crooked. She's hitting. Jack knife. Got to get pry bar. I think there was a video about this many years ago, wasn't there? And it comes out so far and then it falls down. Oh boy. Oh, there we are. Okay. Smile, you're on candid camera. Hello. That's not good, Duggo. There's no water in there. No, I know. That's why I'm doing this, because of improper maintenance, once again, <laughs> being had. I'm just showing Brody how the brand new jugs leak. They get to sell twice as much water that way. <laughs> it's so amusing. <laughs> He's so caught and, up on this. Uh, He's got to show everybody. Two are all but empty. <laughs> Never been open. This one, I grab it. That's not that's, good. That's how we gotta sell our corn. When we leave the farm, we fill it up, but by the time we get to town, the trailer is empty, but we still charge it full, full price. Yeah, here's our empty trailer. Send me the check. I better go sit on. <laughs> I'm not quite sure if that's how that works. Okay, guys, I need help. We gotta take the hood off. Can we park it under the overhead crane? Yeah, yeah, look at how nice it'd be to have a crane. Doggo! Oh! What? We need a crane. Yeah, you go talk to that guy that was, I'll take that crane that was offered to us eight years ago for the same price that they had eight years ago. I'm in. <laughs> I don't know if they could. But sell a stronger one for the same price. A we priced the crane for in here in 2020. It was like 32000 Priced it in 21 or 22. It was 64000 Double. Well, you're getting more quality in that year. <laughs> okay, I do not remember which head hood vent we go through, but then you hook it down here. I don't know if you're supposed to do it like this, but it's the way we've done it three times. So hopefully the fourth isn't the time that something bad happens. So our forks aren't long enough. So we found these that I have no idea what they're from. Yeah, I do have two. You want two? He says yes. Nothing can go wrong. What now? Another one? The irony it continues. I got my side off, boys. So now it's two 16 millimeter bolts in the back and I believe we just lift up and off. I took the other one off. I took the other one off, so. Okay, up. Okay, back up. You're good. We're maybe to a height where it won't break if it's right. Now you can paint your grill now. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe let's go by the fuel trailer so it's out of the way. There's a hoodless quad. Oh, we just ate and now Mitchell called and said, Hey, I need your Kodiak and trailer. I just bought a forklift, so road trip. We just ate. 
We just ate. I had some <laughs> chips and fake chicken tenders. So now we're draining coolant because we have to take off all that stuff above the engine so that they can do their job. <laughs> this is slow. This is very slow, but it's also in a really annoying spot up in there. And they put this little trap door to run your hose through, but this has this big weight belly pan on it. So the trap door is blocked. So we got a hose. And now, I'm gonna dismantle some stuff up here. New day. We went and went to Watertown, South Dakota, actually, me and Mitch, and picked up a nice forklift for him. So uh, hopefully that will uh, make his job a little safer. And looks like the boys got that off. So Titan was here yesterday afternoon and adjusted the valves. And as you can see, the valve cover was leaking really bad right down onto the exhaust and then you get that nice burnt oil smell. So that's new. Looks like we got a lot to put together though. That looks fun. But it sounds like we got a couple other things we gotta do to this thing that we're waiting on parts for. Nothing major, just a couple of hoses and new filter housing or something up there. So I think that's gonna be the it, it for this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you guys next time.